Welcome TMDDTM viewers to another episode of Things My Dad Didn't Teach Me. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your old MacBook and make it run like a MacBook 2020. This is a 2012 model that I updated, saved $1,600 and I'm getting the exact same performance as if I would have had a new version. So this is what a 2020 13 inch MacBook Pro would cost me with 16 gigabytes of memory and one terabyte SSD storage. This is the actual cost that I spent to upgrade to get the exact same performance, $286.73. In this video, I'll show you how to upgrade your hard drive. I'll be posting another video about how to actually upgrade your memory. So be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified when that video is posted. All right, so this is a step-by-step -step video on how to run the time machine backup. Next, we'll install the new SSD hard drive, which for me was a one terabyte hard drive. We'll then show you how to format the new hard drive that you've actually installed. And finally, we'll actually reload the clone setup from Time Machine back up. Let's get into it. Now we need to determine compatible SSD drives. Go to the Apple icon, select About This Mac. Now you want to select System Report. You're looking for Model Identifier. Model Identifier. My model identifier is a MacBook Pro 9,2. You'll need that to actually look it up online. Compatible storage devices for MacBook Pro 9,2. Now let's go purchase that SSD drive. Go to MacSales.com. You want to hover over Drive until you see SSD, then select SSDs. Scroll down until you get to MacBook Pro. Now you're going to search for your model identifier. Here's mine, 9. 2 that covers all 2012 through 2016 models but you can see that they sell all the SSD drives and hard drives for various MacBooks. I have a couple of options. I can uh, actually purchase the Mercury Extreme or the Mercury Electra 6G. I'm going to get the Mercury Electra 6G which is fine for my needs. One terabyte for $144.99. Purchase is made. Now let's get into the install. Alright, so first you want to connect your hard drive. Whatever that is that you use to run your time machine back up to. Notice here that I got a Mac or Windows option. I click Mac. I run a software called Parallels that allow me to partition my MacBook and run it as a PC or as a MacBook. You won't have that pop up if you don't run Parallels. So I'm going to put my password in to let the MacBook know that I want to run Time Machine. Then I'm going to go up and select the Time Machine icon at the top. Select Backup Now. Now we just want to confirm that we're running. Select Open Time Machine Preferences. And you'll see here that it's preparing to run the actual backup. And now it's just a waiting game. I'll be using tech screwdrivers, a pry tool, time machine external hard drive, powder free nitrile gloves, and one terabyte SSD internal drive. All right, so now we wanna flip this MacBook over, remove the 10 screws from the back. The top three screws to the right are actually longer than the remaining seven screws. So make sure you keep up with those screws. If you lose them, they're a nightmare to try to actually locate. Remove the top. Now we want to use the pry tool to actually disconnect the battery. Be very gentle with this. From your tech toolkit, you want to uh, select your PH00 screwdriver. It's important that you get the right tools from the job. You do not want to strip these screws. There are two screws on this retaining bar that you want to actually remove. Once you remove those two screws, you can lift off the retaining bar and remove the actual hard drive out of here. Lift the plastic tab that's connected to the hard drive. Remove the actual static connector here. Be very gentle removing that. You don't want to snap that. You'll see here, this is our old hard drive. You're going to need the Torx T6 screwdriver here. Remove all four screws from the side. You'll be needing these screws because you're going to attach those to the new hard drive, the SSD 
that you're going to actually replace this old hard drive with. So be sure to keep up with those screws. This is the one terabyte SSD. I purchased this from MaxSales.com. Great place to purchase. This OWC solid state drive is 32 times the capacity of the original drive and 92 times faster than the original drive. All right, so we're going to install this one terabyte SSD drive. You can see what the old drive actually looked like, an electromechanical setup here. You can still find these. They're much cheaper than the SSD drives, but they're not as reliable or as fast, so definitely pick an SSD drive. Stay away from these older drives. They're kind of a dying breed here. They're a dinosaur again. Here you can see what the solid state storage drives look like as compared to the old drives. With the Torx T6 screwdriver, we're going to reconnect those screws we took off the old drive and put them on the new drive. Make sure you attach all four of those screws. Now we want to gently attach the static connector. Be sure not to bend the pins, so take your time. Make sure you got a good connection. Place the old tab on the new drive. Then you want to reconnect the retaining bar here. Screw those back on using a PH00 screwdriver. Now we want to reconnect the battery. Be gentle. Make sure you don't force it. It should just slide in very smoothly. Those green circuit boards you see right next to the attachment for the battery, that's your memory. We can update that right now if we want it, but I'll be posting a video to show you how to actually upgrade your memory as well. But you can do it right now simultaneously if you wanted to. Now we're ready to format this drive. Go ahead and connect the power. Make sure you connect the external time machine drive before you boot up. Hold down Option and Command and R at the same time while pressing Start. Continue to hold until you actually see a globe running across your screen or you see some sort of feedback. Alright, so I got a folder with a question mark. This means I didn't actually hold the keys down in time. So let's go ahead and force quit uh, the system. It's all right, not a big deal. All right, let's try this again. Option Command R, and then press the Start button. Continue to hold down Option Command R until you see a revolving globe. There you go. So there's the globe we're looking for. Go ahead and connect to your Wi-Fi. This does take some time, so I'm going to go ahead and speed this film up. So you're not waiting for five to minutes for this to connect. All right. So, we have success here. We're in. We are at our Mac OS recovery uh, screen. Locate the disk utility. Select that and hit continue. Now you want to select the internal hard drive on the left that you're looking to use. Mine is uh, called Macintosh HD. Go select the erase box at the top under Disk Utilities. You can rename this drive if you want to. I'm going to keep mine as Macintosh HD. The format you want to select is APF, or it may say Mac OS Extended Journal. It just depends on what the default setting is for your system. One of the two, but either will work. So I went ahead and made sure I selected APFS. That's what was the default for mine. Then select the erase button. All right, it's formatted. Hit done. Exit out by tapping on the red button at the top left. 
Now we're going to go ahead and restore the Time Machine Backup. All right, so select Restore from Time Machine Backup here. Hit Continue. Now it's restoring the Time Machine. Hit Continue again. We want to select uh, a Restore Source. It'll pop up here in a second. All right, so the external hard drive that you have the backups on should be there. Select that and then hit Continue. We want to restore from the latest version. So mine was last backed up August 13th, 2020. Select that one and then hit continue. Select the destination. Mine is the Macintosh HD. Not the one that says data, but just the one that says Macintosh HD. Then hit restore. Then hit erase disk. And we're going to start to restore. This will take a while. It can take anywhere from two to 10 hours, depending on what you actually have on the system. I don't know anyone who took longer than that, more than 10 hours, but uh, I've done this before and it's taken me eight hours on some and two hours on others. This one took me a total of five hours to actually do the restore. Once you're done, this screen will pop up. Add your login password if you actually have one set and enter as if you're booting up for the first time. Now you need to fill in all your Apple ID information, complete all the system requests, answer all their questions. Once you complete, you wanna shut it down and then restart. Time Machine Backup is a beautiful thing. It is literally going to clone everything you had on your MacBook before uh, you did this install. It's all right, here we go. We're in. All right, so we're in real time. I want you to see how fast things are popping up. I just selected iMovie. It used to literally take five minutes for iMovie to pop up with the old system. So there it is, immediate response. You got blazing speed here. That SSD is much faster than the old hard drive setup we had in here. Watch when I collect, uh, select the PowerPoint button here. See how quickly it responded. Guys, these are super fast. Uh, this is the way you save a ton of money. Thank you for joining me for another episode of Things My Dad Didn't Teach Me. Be sure to like, subscribe, and click the notification bell so that you can get the latest episodes of Things My Dad Didn't Teach Me. God bless.